This is Twit. Okay, so under the headline, CISA and FBI release Secure by Design Alert urging manufacturers to eliminate defects in Soho routers. And I, I think everyone knows Soho, uh, S-O-H-O, small office, home office, is what that, that abbreviation is. So last Wednesday, CISA and the FBI published guidance. This is the third s- such release of theirs. They've kind of, and, th- and this is the first aimed at down at, at the consumer. Previously, they were talking at, at the enterprise level. So they, they published guidance on security design improvements for Soho device manufacturers, which is part of their new Secure by Design alert series, which focuses on how manufacturers should shift the burden of security, thank God, away from from the customers who, you know, they just want this stuff to work, plug it in, set it and forget it by integrating security into the product design and its development. So this third publication in CISA's series examines how manufacturers can eliminate what they call the path threat actors. Um, the, the, The path threat, I'm sorry, which actors are taking to compromise small office and home office routers. Um, th- now, they were specifically referring to a recent initiative. Th- there is a group out of China known as the Volt Typhoon Group, which the FBI just somewhat controversially took down um, by patching these routers. And it was my intention initially to talk about that as our main topic this week, but I ran out of space actually on the podcast at a time. And I really needed to talk about this, the consequences of what I realized was going to be happening as a consequence of stumbling upon this financial times piece. So I have that skewed uh, that, that queued up for next week, but there was something that caught my attention in this, which was unsuspected or unanticipated. Um, they said, CISA did in, in, in this joint FBI release, that they wanted manufacturers to do three things. Automate update capabilities, remove web management from the WAM, from the WAN interface, and require a manual override to remove security settings. Okay, so all of this podcast listeners have probably grown tired of hearing me talk about those first two points. Automate updates and remove all device management from the public facing interface, the WAN interface, right? You, you just there's you just don't need to manage to use a web interface aimed at the internet so that you can use you can access your device across the internet there there you know what we keep learning is that we don't know how to do that safely because everyone keeps making mistakes so and you don't have to expose it to the public because there are plenty of ways to get over onto the private LAN from the public interface from the public internet and then access the the device from the LAN side that's the way we should do it Anyway, um, the third one was really interesting. I think it's brilliant. They say require a manual override to remove security settings. In other words, routers should not accept remote or any, even local, over-the-wire instructions which reduce their security in the absence of a manual physical local confirmation of some kind. There's no substitute for the affirmation of one's physical presence at a router's location. You know, pressing a, I want to change my router's configuration button is the one thing no remote attacker in Beijing is able to do from the comfort of their cyber warfare bunker. Um, I think that the best way to do this 
would be to require a button to be pressed in order to place the router into configuration change mode. So if a user logs into their router, you know, they're welcome to do that. They're welcome to poke around and look at the router's various settings. But the moment the user attempts to change something which is important to the security of the system, the router's UI will pop up a little box and say, please, please press the enable configuration changes button on your router to proceed. And it'll just wait. Once the button is pressed, the router will take down that little message and will allow the user to change its configuration until the user either logs out of the interface or after some period of inactivity, because most people just, you know, leave their login cookie present and, and logged in so they can get back to it easily if they need to, you know? So would this be potentially a pain in the butt? Yeah. Especially if the router is in the attic, but you know, it's a classic trade-off between security and convenience. Requiring a one-time password is certainly not as convenient as not using one. But, you know, that requirement is clearly much more secure. So the problem being addressed is, you know, in this case, is very real. You know, we are populating the world with insecure yet increasingly powerful consumer routers which are actually being taken over by malign remote forces that wish to exploit our traditional lack of focus on security. So once again, I give big props to CISA for leading this truly necessary change. I, I think this makes so much sense. You know, yes, again, it will be a bit of an annoyance to have to go to, to physically go to the router and press the button saying i want to enable configuration changes but it's a brilliant requirement and i do hope that we see this and really we're not doing this all the time and if you are don't put your router in the attic put it somewhere a little more accessible and that'll just become you know the way we do things in the, in, in the future i think this makes so much sense Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Security Now. If you want the whole show, you can get it at our website, twit.tv slash SN. Of course, you can subscribe to Security Now on your favorite podcast or just click one of the links below.